let us take a look at the common error and common mistake on exam review. So in this question, we want to identify population and the sample. A survey, so you have a keyword here, of 1,503 U.S. adults found that out of those 1,503 U.S. adults, 78% favor government policies requiring better fuel efficiency for vehicles. So let us take a look at the options. The population is 1,503 U.S. adults. No, it's not. Population includes everybody. Population is the collection of responses of U.S. adults, and sample is this sub-collection, which is 1,503. This is a correct answer. Number three says population is U.S. adults who favor government policies, and sample is 78%. It's not correct. This 78% is the result of that survey. In that survey of 1,503, uh, adults, 78% favor government policies. And finally, the last one says population is all people live in the United States and sample is 1,503 U.S. vehicles. It's not. Let's take a look at the next question. In the next question, we have determined whether the numerical value is a parameter which is related to population or is a statistic which is related to sample, which one is related to that. So in 2012, Major League Baseball teams spent a total of about $3 trillion on players' salaries. So a total of, right? So this is a keyword for you, everyone. First of all, when you are looking at the multiple choice, the very first one says the statistic is the total amount spent on salaries by all teams well, it's not statistic. Statistic is about sample. It's not about the population. So this is not correct. The parameter, this is based on a survey. When we see the survey, survey is all about sample, not about population. Statistic, it's an estimate of the total. Again, we have total. So total is always about population. And then parameter is the value of about $3 trillion in numerical description of the total player's salary. This is a correct answer. So you need to identify the keywords here. Statistic, subsection, survey, and parameter is about total, everybody, everything. Determine if you have a qualitative data, qualitative data like categorical data, like hair color, blood type, and so on. And quantitative data are the data that when you do algebra on them, the algebra makes sense. So if you find the average of um, grades, that makes sense, am I right? But if you find the average of social security numbers, it doesn't make sense. Here you have zip codes, the zip codes of a sample of 200 customers at a sporting goods store. So since you have zip codes, if you do algebra on zip codes, if you find the average of zip codes, that average doesn't mean anything. So it means that you have a qualitative or categorical data here. Next question. So in this question, you have a data set that represents the number of minutes a sample of 25 people exercise each week. So you have 108 minutes, 150 minutes, 101 minutes, 118 minutes, and so on. So in constructing a frequency distribution for the data set using five classes, you want to identify different things. So first of all, let us form the class width. What is the class width? Class width, as you remember, is the range of the data divided by the number of classes. So you have 157, which is the maximum value in your collection, minus 101, which is the minimum value in your collection, and divided by five, because you have five classes. When you do the division, the number is 1102. But when you're constructing a class width, you always round up to 12. So here you have your 12. Let us build our frequency table. The class starts from 101 and stops at 112 minutes. The next class starts at 113 minutes and stops at 124 minutes and so on. And know that the difference between these two is 12 which is the class width. Okay, and as usual, we count 
all of the values in between these two numbers inclusive, the midpoint of the first class is the summation of these two numbers divided by two. The midpoint of the second class is the summation of these two numbers divided by two and so on. We can also find the class boundaries and the frequency for each class and the relative frequency, basically dividing the frequency of that class by the total values, which is 25. So three divided by 25 is 12%. 11 divided by 25 is 44%. 7 divided by 25 is 28% and so on. So now the question says, the midpoint of the first class is, well, the midpoint of the first class is 106.5. Guys, do not round these things. Midpoint is representative of the first, second, third, or other classes. We don't round them. So the midpoint of the first class is 106.5. In the next question, after building and constructing our frequency table, again, remember, we need to find the class width first, which is 12, and then we build our classes. We count the number of values in each class, the relative frequency, the cumulative frequency, and so on. Here, the question says, what is the relative frequency of the second class? The relative frequency of the second class is 11 divided by 25, which is 44%. So you're going to write it as 44% as the relative frequency of the second class. Let us move on to the next question. When you graph the data using your frequency table, this is the visualization of the data. As you can see, if you want to be fair, we have the data and the graph skewed to the right-hand side. This is not a normal distribution. So if the question says the data seem to be skewed to the left or right, we're going to say that it is skewed to the right-hand side. The tail of the data is on the right-hand side. So we say that the data is skewed to the right side. In the next question, we want to find the quartiles, right? So let us list the data from smallest to largest and then divide them up using the midpoint, which is the middle value, the second quartile, or the median. So the median of the data is 123. 123 divide the data into two halves. The first portion on the left-hand side, and the second portion is on the right-hand side. After finding the median of the data on the left-hand side, and the median of the data on the right-hand side, we basically have all the information that they need. So the minimum value is 101. The first quartile is the mean of these two data. This is the average. 117 plus 118 divided by 2 gives you 117.5. And as we know, the median of the data is second quartile, 13. 23. And finally, the second half of the data, uh, after finding the median, you're basically finding the third quartile. And the maximum value is 157. So since the question says, hey, what is the first quartile? The first quartile is 117.5.